we are called Ambazonians, and we start explaining, and people start coming with their narratives why we are supposed to be called Ambazonia, the world would see that. People would pick that up. People would understand what we are doing. But when we spend, you know, five hours on WhatsApp arguing with each other, it doesn't push anything. When we go on WhatsApp and we cry that Pobia is maltreating us, Pobia is a devil and all that, the world doesn't even hear. You are just, you are just preaching to the choir, per se. So we are really begging on our people to, to and, and tweeting is easier than the WhatsApp that we do. It's easier. You, you, for, for 20 minutes, you could tweet about 20, 30 tweets for 20 minutes. But remember how long it takes you to go through one single, simple, simple argument on, on WhatsApp. And then when you miss WhatsApp for three hours, you come back and you meet 500 messages. 500 messages that we are talking to ourselves. Yeah. Um... We just, uh, why would we talk about this now? Because um, when would we defend homeland? We get to make a people know why would we defend them. Because of people, if you say, some person doesn't make them, and they say tweets will not take us to Boya. Yes, we will not say be tweets that will take me for Boya, but it will enhance what we will take me for Boya. You know, if you go to defend territory, where people the war outside won't know why they defend them. The reason why we need to tell our story, now so that when people are here tomorrow say, um, La Republic, look at how we, we defend ourselves. It's not as if we happen we La Republic so and die. They say, oh no, these people have been telling their story. This is what happened. They know the story. They understand them. Now why that way they, 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 they will come to say no, make, uh, make, 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 we get a kind of a dialogue with, with these people. We see how we come out, uh, we we'll get terms of, of separation. So we need to talk and say tweets go take me to go to, to Boya. We mean to say go enhance what we are going to Boya. We go, we go, we go internationalize our story. A lot of people don't even know about us, to be honest. But then when they say ESA some country they for, for, for Central West, within Central West Africa, we it the kill soldier. As well as the public put up outside they don't want to know. And but they don't even give our story, so we even find out. You see, Ray, it's it's common knowledge. A lot of people like we have been tagging international organizations. Question how many times go and look at your messages? How many times have you tagged the UN in reality? Like you think when you make a post and you say the UN is useless on Facebook, they don't even see it. They don't even see, they don't even see that message. Let me just inform you that. Look at the trend. Look at the trend. From January, from December last year, right up to about June, ask yourself how many people, how many international media houses interviewed our leaders at that time? Very few. Then look at from August when we really took on on the campaigns and all that. Right now, the president has two, three interviews waiting for him. You th those things are not accidents. Those things are not accidents. Happening why? Because the president's account is active on Twitter. He's explaining to the world why we must take on self-defense. Why the Republic military getting into our land is an act of aggression and, and can be and, and should be met with the same act of aggression. That's why our people in their communities wake up to defend. That is why our people in their communities, when you break into somebody's house, that person has a right to defend himself under international law, and that person has a right to kill you. Because why are you breaking into somebody's house in the first different country and you're a military from another country? It's because our president goes out there and explains those things, and the world understands, oh, okay, that's what's going on. But if you leave somebody like Isa Churuma to be running the narrative on all media platforms, do you know how damaging that is for us? It would only lead to more and more people calling us secessionists, and it would not even be long. If you take the route that some people, are, some of us are taking, it would not even be long for us to be that terrorists when we haven't done anything. It will not even be long. PR is something that is important. Ask any expert around you. Ask media people around where you are. How important PR is. Countries are literally run on PR. They are run on PR. The war. North Korea and America today. Why do you think they take on Twitter and they tweet a lot all the time? They are controlling their narrative so that when something happens, they should have backers. So... It's not, even, it's not even an argument. It's not even an argument. We all understand that we need to fight and take our land. But right now, we need to do certain things. And that certain thing is that we need to continuously to make people to sympathize with what our enemy is doing to us. Yeah. And we can do that effectively through Twitter, than the WhatsApp messaging, than the Facebook write-ups, the three-page write-ups. Imagine if, if I'm South African. 
and I go on to Facebook and I've got an Amazonian friend and I go to his page and he has posted this write up that is three pages long. I have to open the message three times just to get the whole message. Do you think I'm going to read that? Really? I'm not. But Twitter, 140 words, uh, 140 characters or 280 characters now, that's your message. You send your message through short text. It's easy to read. And when a message is shared several times, obviously somebody says this message must be important. It carries their attention and they read it. So nobody should, nobody should, should, should confuse the idea that we think that we are not going to defend our land. We have the right to defend our land. We have that right. La Republic sending military into our land is an act of aggression, as our president has said. They are going across their territorial boundary, but it's our responsibility to go out and actively tell the world that that is what is happening. So that when we defend our land and La Republic comes out and say we killed their soldiers, the world already knows that those people, I mean, it's like somebody breaks into your house and takes food every day and then you wake up in the morning, the food is not there. You have to go out and tell the community if you are suspecting somebody that this person is breaking into your, into your house. So that the day that person comes and you shoot him, the community already knows that this person is used to breaking into your house. Because if you just shoot that person, what if that person has been telling the community that you hate him? Then they wake up in the morning, you have shot that person by your door. The, com the, world will, the community will say, well, no, you hated this person and now you have killed him. But that's somebody that has been breaking into your house and taking your children's food. But if you had been announcing it to the community, hey, I'm warning this neighbor because he keeps breaking into my house and taking my, uh, my children's food. Then the entire community knows. And then the day you shoot this person, the community understands that this person has been breaking into this person's house, breaks in now, and the person shot. In, it's an act of self-defense. So it's just simple reasoning. Yeah, so make we tweet more, tweet more. And make we not only tweet, they talk about story, uh, maybe we tweet about our refugees in Nigeria because the more you tweet international community, they see them and they want help. Um, we get organizations the way that they help in some situation them. So we tweet uh, the, 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 the situation where our refugees that they go through and some of these international communities that they, that they help, that they send, uh, they want to send food and, and clothes and so on. So maybe we continue to tweet. And, and talking about the refugees, um, it just be but normal, say, as we really prepare for, for, for celebrate Christmas. Um, we also need for no say these people also get to celebrate Christmas as well. So it'd be very, very necessary, say, uh, make all we become Santa, Santa Claus, for give. Uh, Christmas as a talk, a time of giving. And with the appeal for everybody, everybody, if you really spend so, uh, uh, 20,000 for Christmas, you cut that into half give half to these refugees. They need our help more, now more than ever before. Um, some of them be pregnant and they need for the born some more time, they need small picking clothes, them. they need diapers. So we beg on every person around the world. If you know some of your friends, when when your neighbors, when our when 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 indigenous of the country, where they stay there, go to them, explain your story for them. For your workplace where you work, they tell your boss, show you our pictures, tell them, say we need humanitarian help for those our people. You know they know. If you want to talk to some person, put some better money for down, carry, carry chop, car and go give our our citizens for, for Nigeria. If you imagine what you mean, say you did for your house, they chop three times for one day, and then suddenly you know you know whether you chop one time for one day. You just you don't know, hope now let's say some of you can help now. So maybe we try put ourselves for those people that shoes, then try for see say maybe we help. South Africa today, we don't, we don't get a very vigorous campaign. Uh, we call on all the people of South Africa to come out and donate uh, for this struggle, donate for the relief for Nigeria. We don't collect foodstuff, we don't collect a lot of clothing and, 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 and uh, toys for the picking them. What we need for ship them for Nigeria. But also with the appeal for those of we who live in South Africa, say maybe we come with cash. Because as our, our sister we talked last time, it'd be cheaper for good Nigeria buy rice, bag rice, buy bagari, buy plantain, and then give the refugees than for we for buy them from here, the ship them again to Nigeria. The cost of shipping and clearing be very expensive. So we need all the money to put together and send to our brothers and sisters we in our refugees for Nigeria. Yeah. 
uh, I think this refugee situation, we can never talk enough about. Um, and <coughs> the saddest thing that I look at myself in the mirror and think about is the fact that my brothers, my sisters, are called refugees. This is an unimaginable situation that I've never imagined, you know, people that I call my people to ever be in. It's a, it's a, it's a pitiful situation that we find ourselves in. But there's a saying that it's in, the times, it's in times of adversity that ingenuity is born. And it is that time for us Ambazonians, it's that time for us Southern Cameroonians to really stand and prove to ourselves first that we can take care of each other. To really stand and prove to those children that the future we are fighting for is a better one. The future we are, I mean, uh, a majority of these refugees are children. Under, they're under 15 years old. And what we are fighting for, we are fighting for a better future for them. We are fighting so that they never have to run away from their homes again. We are fighting so that they, they, they have a life that is befitting. And if we abandon them now in Nigeria to die, then what really are we fighting for if we cannot stand with them? You, you know, I'm having a conversation with, with some friends, and, and they say, anybody in our community, especially abroad, who's, who is an active church person, active in your church activities, and your church doesn't know that we have refugees in Nigeria, then you are failing the struggle. If you haven't, you know, told your community in church, because when you are active in church, you are doing some community work, you are going out and helping people who are needy and all that, and you haven't told those people that you have spent your five, last five years, ten years with them, helping other people, that your people need help, then you are not doing justice. So I, I, I'm begging that uh, most of us, we are Christians, and we participate highly in our church communities. We should turn to those church communities and, and ask for help. They say when you are in trouble, at times what you just need to do is to ask for help. And we are begging our people to ask for help. Ask for help from your churches. Ask for help from your workplace. There are big companies. Some of us, I mean, we have a lot of doctors. I mean, Amazonia probably, once we get to Boya, when you look at the analysis, we'll probably be the most educated country. We have so many doctorate doctors that we have lost count of that. As educated as we, as we are, most of us we work for corporates, and corporates they have corporate social responsibilities. Companies have a percentage of their earnings that they just want to give away for goodwill. This is the time for you to reach out to that uh, corporate social arm, responsibility arm of your company and start saying, hey, my people are in trouble in Nigeria. Show your corporation the pictures. Show them the stories when international media covers them. Share it amongst your workplace, your, your colleagues at work, so that you can buy sympathy from them and they can also chip in. When, when in, in, in the 80s, when South Africa was fighting for their liberation, you, some of us would remember that you went to school and they said you should give, uh, you should contribute your, your, your feeding money to Free Mandela. The Free Mandela Fund that was contributed all across Africa. That's because the South Africans reached out for help. They were also going to Europe and asking for the big money, but they all, oh, they came to schools. I mean, our parents, would remind us of stories of having to contribute, you know, 500 francs. Some would say they contributed 50, 50 francs towards a fund to free, to free Mandela. And free Mandela was their own hashtag back in the day. There was no Twitter. But they, made, they personalized their struggle to Mandela. It made it memorable. It wasn't, they couldn't make it a struggle to free South Africa. So they creatively made it a struggle to free Mandela. That was... That was, that was a whole strategy. That was a whole strategy. And the war caught up with the story, Mandela is a good man, Mandela is a good lawyer that has been thrown into jail and has been languishing in jail. He's been sentenced for life. And people caught up with that story and people sympathized with Mandela. And when you were contributing your 25 francs, it's because in your heart of hearts, you wanted to free Mandela. And it felt good. Children contributed in schools. A lot of our elder brothers and elder sisters they testify to have, haven't done this. So why are we Amazonians not doing that today? Do you have a can in your workplace where people can contribute to, to feed a child? Do you have a can in your workplace where somebody can, can contribute to free Amazonia? 
Do you, do you have all those things? So at times we sit down and we talk of a lot of things that our leaders are supposed to be doing. And we never ever sit to think of the things that we could do in our own space. Do you think that if you put a cop in your workplace and you raise $20, it's not going to serve a purpose? No, there's one person who genuinely cannot pay their own citizenship levy of $20. And when you put that cop in your workplace or in your church and you collect $20 and you pass it on to the interim government, that helps that one person, it fills the gap for that one person that we have counted that was supposed to contribute, and that person genuinely doesn't have. I mean, what of the person who reaches out in his workplace, like one of the lecturers uh, in one of the universities here reached out, and right now there's a lot of work, diplomatic work that we are being done with another organization because this lecturer reached out to his colleagues, the colleagues shared the message to other people in the network, and right now, there's a big organization that is looking into our story and saying next year they would really come on board and see how they can help with the work they are doing to see that they push our story forward. What if, what if somebody did not share, what if that lecturer did not take that story and share with their colleagues? So at times, instead of arguing with ourselves, put down this thing, you know, let us write our story in little messages that our colleagues, our friends can understand and tell them in person. Because when you tell them, they pass it on and they pass it on, and you never know who is listening to that story. In as much as we know that we are going to fight and free <coughs> our land, we need the international community to know why we are fighting. We need them to know that. All right. Um, soon we will open the lines uh, for here from those of you, especially those of you back at home call and give us your experiences and probably advise the interim government we're waiting for do because as, as I don't tell you now most often the interim government watch SCBC and they want to hear what you know they think what you know they want me to do as they be a government way to listen to the people and they give the people which way they want now tell me how you now want to make we deal with Eto and song with uh, Roger Mila where they come for our territory they're going to tell you how we will deal with them so that the interim government will take a, a decision tonight for which way the people want them. And um, as we talked last time, um, make we continue for, for, for encourage our artists and for Amberland for send their music to us um, so that we will promote their music so we get to know our artists. Um, it's always good that when we get such talents amongst us, maybe we, maybe we promote them because now tomorrow when we don't get Amberland, that industry gave a grow. We need to forget our own music out there. We tell our story through music. We need to forget our own movies. So we get two nice uh, pieces from uh, Ambazonians where uh, their music, where they don't play them. And, and even though, well, probably you know, we talk about the struggle, but our uh, talent, our uh, talent, we, they don't produce them and we go like. Before we come for get calls, uh, we'll probably go on a, on a short break, watch those talents. I will encourage all Ambazonians to for, for send through their own music. Maybe we play them. I remember, say, one of our brothers from Kambe, if you don't send the music on day, we play them. They won't come back, call it. All man for Kambe, they call it, say, they don't see it for TV. I mean, do you know how, I mean, you know, I mean, you feel fulfilled, say, in music, we don't play them, we not probably, and a few people that be listening to them, the whole country don't listen to that music. So, make when I send, if you send your friend in music to us, or you send your movies, and ACBC go play them, and we go all enjoy them, and when we get our country, that the kind people that we go promote them for that industry will grow. Yeah. So we're going to have a short music break, and we'll enjoy some Ambazonian music. And just so I share a tip, Ray is a passionate uh, arts and culture promoter. So, yeah, so. I beg, when I say when I'm music for Rayo, yes. I'm a big, big, big promoter. So oh, yeah, when he keeps on talking about <laughs> music, it's something that he's really passionate about, and if you are a musician or you are an artist, you, you should really hook up with Ray, you know. And he is somebody who really loves arts and culture and he wants to promote his own. So it's important to reach out. So uh, we will have some music break and then after that we'll open our lines and take some calls and listen, hear from you. Yeah.
Come join this party I want your proper body Cause you know lazy Lazy, lazy, lazy. see the reason why we say we need to you know we need to promote our own we don't lack talent and i'm sure that it's going to be the same for our soccer team it's going to be the same for every other uh, domain that ambazonians engage themselves in some beautiful music pieces there from ambazonians we are encouraging more ambazonian artists we are encouraging artists to think more about the struggle musicians have got it in history if you look back at history musicians have done a lot to promote struggles, to promote uh, uh, issues uh, that are often regarded as minority issues and all that. So we're encouraging our musicians to sing more about the struggle, and not only sing, but help share uh, their music, their work with SBC, so that we are able to, to help them promote it, to, to help you know take away the, the steam with this. I mean, if you are like me, you were dancing during the break because the music was quite good. Uh, both both musicians did a great job. We want to see more and more of this. In as more, music, music does a lot in communicating because uh, music doesn't have boundaries. Music doesn't have uh, it doesn't belong to one country. Everybody would listen to a song about freedom and and love freedom and want to listen more to it. And that is another way that we can use and tell our story to the world. So let us promote our own, but let our artists really go in there digging. The inspiration. I mean, every artist who is really an artist must have been inspired somehow by the struggle. We want to see a lot more of those uh, creative works that is telling our story, that is telling the story of the struggle, so that we can use it as one medium to, you know, to take out the stress and at the same time still telling our story, you know, to the world. Yeah, Derek. <clears throat> I know we we want to we want to hear struggle songs and all whatnot, um, but. In terms of struggle, life no good revolves around struggle. You know, we're supposed to in as well get time for relax and listen to good music. The reason why we the one for the play Amazonian music, even when it not relate to struggle, now for just make a make understand so we get a lot of talent, untapped talent inside Amazonia where La Republic don't put and push and down for so long. You know, we, how many, since we start grow up, how many Amazonia don't play for? Uh, La Republic national team, we, we count them, we count them, but we get very good, talented Ambazonians where they don't travel around the world for try for play ball, but they don't, don't be so they play ball. But if we, if we groom our own, show groom our own football players for our own country, we we'll get good players, we we'll get countries that don't reach 200,000. See, um, uh, Cape Vet, Cape Vet, now how many people are they Cape Vet? 500, About 500,000, but see, they beat South Africa, they beat, they beat Cameroon, they beat countries. So we get 8 million people, means if we get 11, 22, well, strong, good soccer players. 
Eh? So we want for begin to showcase uh, our our talent like that, for, so that we will, and we will make our dream more of the kind Ambazonia we want for day inside the one way all man fit dream for be anything with the talent we get them. So we not go only playing only music will be related to the struggle. We go play music, music in our art, make any Ambazonian express itself for any way we want them. Stand up for we. We go play on the TV. We we'll select music that plays based on whether you're Ambazonian, you know, get like Republic flag for day. Yes. You need to promote like Republic. You need to promote like Republic. As long as you, be, you sing, we you know, talk, um, uh, you know, promote like Republic, we go play. And as we we'll select music, you know, be saying, I always struggle music, we we'll go play them. Yeah, so we opening up our lines uh, to hear from you. Uh, when you call in on SBC, you're literally speaking to our government, you're advising our government on what they should be doing. Our leaders listen very well, and, and we have a, a situation at hand. Uh, uh, Mila Roger and his football friends, they are going to Boya on Monday to do a peace march, and we are wondering why now? Why, why go and do a peace march now? Why didn't they go and do a peace march on the 2nd of October when our people were murdered in cold blood? Why didn't they go after the 22nd of September? Why didn't they go last year after the 8th of yesterday? December? 8th of, 8th of December, when 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 uh, when Akum Julius was murdered in cold blood by military men, why didn't these soccer stars, why didn't these people that we used to hold dear to our hearts, why didn't they cry foul? Why didn't it to send a plane to, to to go and rescue the people in in, in Nigeria? Why didn't he send a plane to go and give them food, to go and give them clean water? So these people, they take care of their own. And I've, I've explained over and over to, 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 to our people that what La Republic is fighting for, they are fighting for their survival. And what we are fighting for, we are also fighting for our survival. And the fight for survival is a very critical fight. It's, it's, a, it's a fight that can get dirty very quickly because you are fighting to survive. And, and when you are fighting to survive, there really is no, <laughs> there's no modalities to how you can get dirty with it. Uh, when you look at the, the economic map of Cameroon, you realize that Ambazonia accounts for about 65% of the national GB, GDP. So it makes sense that they will do anything, they would kill, they would, they would do anything to ensure that they keep Ambazonia oppressed. That should ring a bell in your head if you are Ambazonian. You should understand that these people are fighting to keep what is keeping their country going. And that is Ambazonia, and we have been blessed richly by God. And then I just have to reinforce our resolve. You understand that your enemy is fighting to survive, but then if you let your enemy survive, it means you are not going to survive yourself. Because if we let La Republic get away with this, we are never probably going to be here where we are now, where we have liberated ourselves mentally, and we have to physically liberate our land. If we if we go back, if we go back today, I'm not sure that, I'm sure that it's going to take another generation, another 30, 50 years for Ambazonians to rise to where we are right now. So there really is no turning back. It's like you have been thrown in the middle of the sea and you have two options, either to swim back or to swim across. And right now, the best option is to swim across. Yes, we are tired to have gotten where we are right now, but then we are in the middle, and it's the same distance to swim back, and it's the same distance to swim across. That decision is ours to make Ambazonians, and I'm begging every Ambazonian that we should not relent. We should not relent. We have accomplished a lot in one year, but there's a lot more in front of us. We are all tired because of the mental, you know, what we have gone through mentally, putting the holding the struggle together, for the one year. It's not something we are used to. It's not something we do every year. It's just our first time doing this. There's no, there's no handbook for the struggle that we wake up and we read and we follow instructions. No, we are learning on the job and we still have our lives to live. So it's important that we take this one year as our school and then now we have to really practice what we have learned. And that practice is that we have to really strengthen our resolve and free our land. Yeah, um, the lines will be open. Um, make a call and tell us your perspective about what, what did happen back at home, especially in Manu. 
how we go do for 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 pour out our hearts to the people of man you for let them understand so we'll deal with them at this very difficult time i feel imagine those who did not belong stock their houses with food how they didn't have a house they never come out of their houses because they fear the soldiers they live on street so we really need to put them in prayers and we call on for 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 also try to donate um anything we want to do for senam because most of them is still run go nigeria as refugees, we we call on our brothers and sisters for generously give, and as as, as the Bible talks, the, uh, the, the the more you give, the more you receive, and it be blessed to give than to receive. So at this time, as not December period, when a giving time, may we open our hearts, open our hands, if we, uh, we dispend uh, some certain amount of money every year for celebrate Christmas, may we take half of that money or part of it. Send them for the refugees from Nigeria. We get people on the ground where they work day and night to make sure, say, uh, they be catered for. So, um, the one at time we do receive calls. Uh, the surprise, I never get any call coming through yet. Um, we need for a year from Una from home and for no way to Una they think and which kind of suggestions Una get for give uh, our government so that they go, they go improve in the aspects uh, where you see um, some kind of laxity for the. Yeah, so we, we have our lines open and and we are only emphasizing that we should not nobody should forget about our brothers and sisters who have found that who find themselves in in villages in Nigeria right now still fighting for their lives. Those people did not plan to run away from their homes. Those people did not see maybe last month or two months thinking that in a month's time or in two months' time, they would run away into Nigeria. They did not prepare for this. This thing caught them our ways, and they ran for their dear lives, and we need to help them. We need to stand with them. So it's important that all of us stand with them. Let us sacrifice some of our Christmas enjoyment. Cut down a day on your holiday. If you have five days holiday, cut down one day on that package and donate it to the refugees. If, you, if, if your family, you know, Look at your expenses and cut a percentage of that. Take a percentage out of that and, and donate it to the refugees in Nigeria and ensure that they, they, they also spend Christmas and they feel that their brothers and sisters from around the world are taking care of them. Uh, like we, we said, it's important that we also go on Twitter and tell the world about the situation in Nigeria. Tell the world about the... We, we are glad that... Uh, uh, Secretary Kalesh and her team has done a great work to really um, ensure that they stop the, the crisis that we were scared of cholera and, and they are still pushing to get the water purification uh, system so that our people have good water, good drinking water there in Nigeria. We are thanking them for that great work but then for all that to happen they need a lot of money. HSS needs a lot of money to ship down the containers to Nigeria to, to have medication and to, to have medication for our people who dearly need it. It's not, it's not for luxury. They don't need this uh, medication for luxury. They need it because they are dying. They need, look at the medical situation, the images that we saw last week. We don't even want to be showing those images because they are disgusting. Yeah, um, we have, we get uh, those of our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. If we do for any community where you did the tribe will find your Ambazonian brothers, ask them, how to, to, to channel your donations because um, uh, um, health and social services get representatives for every country where uh, Ambazonia and be represented and they be organized. Call your friends, ask them how they, 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 they channel their, 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 this thing them and they go send them through, they will tell you how to send through your own because we will they South Africa here will get, uh, we don't get people to point people, we will send the stuff for them. Like tonight when we go sit down for our meeting, we will, we will, people that come with their stuff together, we will collect them from them and we will jump for one person where they pack them for a warehouse where we will send them from Nigeria. So if you're there anywhere in the world, whether for US, for Europe, for, uh, for, for Asia, just call Ambazonians where you know, ask them, they will tell you. Unfortunately, we will not get uh, Sister Kalesh a, a, a number, the number that the user now for put on, on, on the on the screen because one of our sisters will ask how if he donates, but make it call people around uh, her area and they go fit directly on how for for century donation either in kind or in cash uh, yeah so so 
if you find out from your community, any active community will definitely have some links to HSS uh, and they will help to get your, your, your support down to Nigeria as fast as possible. Uh, we want to thank those who have been donating. I, I think we have answered this call generously. Uh, when we, you see our brothers and sisters in Nigeria, almost every week you see a different team going to visit those people to reassure them that we are doing everything to ensure that life is, is better for them as well. We are not abandoning them to the UN, we are not abandoning them to the Nigerian government, and we are really grateful for the Nigerian government. Contrary to the propaganda message that the Republic is sending, that we are at, you know, at, at uh, disarray with the Nigerian government, we have got a lot of help. The, the, the local hospital in one of the, the, the local government areas is treating our people for free and giving medication for free. That goodwill is coming because they understand our pain, they feel our pain, and they are helping us. So, so, so Nigeria has been very friendly, and we must be, we must be grateful for that, and we must treat our Nigerian friends better because of what Nigeria is doing to us. They yeah. say you should never forget somebody who helps you in times of need. And truth be told, the past one year, Nigeria has really helped us a lot, and we should never forget that. Yeah, and the other day, the community where they are. The community where our refugees and they, they gather food, plantain, yams, and they can donate them to the refugees. I, I even hear where they interview one person, he said, get about 30 Ambazonians for a house where they cater for. So if you imagine what the people of that community they go through, some of them don't take Ambazonians in for their houses and they try to help them. So maybe we put these Nigerians in prayer. We continue to ask God to bless them more so that they will get enough to help our people because. I mean, that community, they get their own problems. Now, we don't carry our own problems. Go add them for day. So if you imagine uh, what it go on for, for, for those um, uh, communities at this time, if one person, if you take 30 people, put up a house uh, in Nigeria and put up a house, you, if you know, imagine how they feed those 30 people for, 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 for places they really, you know, easy at all. So uh, why that way we get to do more to contribute for this um, humanitarian crisis? It's important that we never forget about the internally displaced, our young boys in our communities who are running into the bushes. Some of them haven't gotten to Nigeria yet. And it's important that all of us in the diaspora, we know the active youth in our community who are being chased by forces of disorder right now. It's important that we try and reach out to those youth and connect to them. And some of them, at times, they just need medication. They need antibiotics because they've gotten wounds from running through the bushes and all that. It's important that you reach out to those in your community. Uh, our interim government is trying its best with the little meager resources that we support them with. But it's, it's our duty as well as people to, to, to... It's easy for me to reach out to my community, to those in my community, than for our interim government to do so. And if I reach out, I will be able now to, because I'm in the diaspora, easily reach out to our interim government and say, hey, there's this situation in my community. I want you people to, to, to help. So, so let us take that responsibility. If you are active in the struggle, you should connect back with your own grassroots community and, and connect with those who are active. And, and if you cannot help, reach out to our government and point them to that direction so that they can help. We can never go without thanking the doctors at home who are stepping up every day and supporting the call for AMBA doctors to, to help our brothers and sisters who have been wounded and around home. The kind of treatment that they have been giving them. They have given a lot of support to, to HSS uh, department, you know, helping those people go and treat their wounds in their houses or in places that are not a hospital. Because some of those people that were shot on the 22nd of September and on the 1st of November are still targets to La Republic. They cannot go to a normal medical hospital. But what our doctor, brothers and sisters, nurses, what they have done is that they are they are now going and treating those people, you know, in, in their houses, in their hidings, which is very important. So let us connect with our communities. When you find out that somebody in your community was hurt and hasn't gotten help yet, it's important to bring that to the fore. HSS is trying to locate everybody and offer Please, Derek, help. let's try to ask the technical guys. The fact that we are not getting calls means there's an issue with lines. Uh, yes. Uh, can, can, can the technical guys look at this? Uh, can you call and find out if uh, our calls are coming through because uh, we are not getting calls and probably uh, we, we have issues with the lines. Uh, we just want to apologize that, um, you know, we here at the studio, we keep working hard to give the best that we can. 
So I beg, if we call, line no pass, make we let you know so that we fit sort that out, that matter out. Yeah, yeah. So, so thank you, thanks Ray for that reminder. So we we are really uh, we are doing our best, and we really uh, can't thank our team enough for what they do. Those guys are literally doing magic, you know, uh, based on uh, what we have as resources available. They are really doing magic to enable us to have those shows to enable us to have the calls. Can, Can we have the lines on the screen, please? Um, our technical guys should put up the, the phone lines on the screen. We have very limited time. Yeah, Derek, sorry. Yeah. So we, we always, um, you know, we always thank our technical team for the wonderful work that they're doing behind the scenes because those guys, okay, okay we have a caller on the line. Uh, Welcome to Amber Perspective. The person has gone off. Call on hold. So, uh, what a message that we need to also pass across is that we should be learning La Republique as an enemy is very predictable. What has happened in Manu in the last few days? You cannot dismiss the fact that it's going to happen in other counties. And the best thing to do is to be prepared when it happens in your county, because it's going to happen. You can almost predict La Republic that in a week, in two weeks' time, the same thing that has happened in, 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 in Manu is going to happen again. So, so you, should be, you should watch out for that in your communities. Hello? 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 Welcome to Amber Perspective. We're not getting any sound from the other side. Hello? Well, unfortunately, we're not getting sound. Yes, Derek. Yeah. So what has happened in Manu, it's, it's definitely going to happen in, in other communities. Like today, we are getting some intelligent message that is going to happen in the BLM. And and we understand that there are very bad roads in Libelem, and, and what people of Libelem want to do now is to probably be shutting down the roads to let the bees, if they want to enter their communities, they should enter by foot like every other person. They shouldn't enter with their big cars. They should start considering, you know, putting trees on the road and stuff like that. We, all of us, uh, the entire Amazonia must be ready because what has happened in Libelem, uh, in, in Manu, is probably going to happen in other counties. So we should just, as a community, be ready for such a thing to happen and think of things that we can do to keep our people safe. Hello? Yeah, wait till there the talk be very right. Um, La Republic, they the study that can they, they're not going to end them anytime soon. So make every community be prepared, they be ready for no say, these people will come. Now, when I know when our towns very well, when I know how, when I feel high for bush, when I know it, when I feel do, Make una come down with our vigilante groups them get together, be ready for welcome these people very well. Teach them a lesson. Hello. Hello. Welcome to our perspective. Um, it's unfortunate we're not getting sound on the other side. Yeah, um, I did get some people that they say come and say we'll give very poor lines. <laughs> yeah, the person they donate this equipment, we would use them for studio, we never get our own equipment and we not get top of the range equipment as such. So maybe we appreciate the one we'll get them for now. When we we'll donate more money, some person will really listen to it now if we decide will take up the responsibility for buy ACBC, a call management system. Uh, it will cost like about what? $2,000. $1,000. $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1,
we don't get top of the range like some other channels. We maybe we not comp compare it with other channels. We try to manage with the small we get. So yes, um, we go try and as money go enter, we will fix. We go fix um, ACBC better. Maybe we manage one we get. Maybe we no criticize her back. All right, we still wait for calls. If uh, they obviously want to do better, like I mean, you when you go to work, you want to use the best equipment. You want to use the best tools to work so that your your work is easier. But then. Like I said, this struggle is a learning curve for all of us, and at times, all you need to do is use what is available to you at that time yeah. until you, you have better, and you will obviously you know, use the better once you have it. Yeah, one day when we go do a documentary of ACBC Shouna, that then I want to understand how this studio and how the people where they play the magic, <laughs> where they play them. I just say for now. We just want to keep on inside that spell or that blast. We just keep on a spell bound. We're gonna just enjoy this the way we the thing go for now. But time will not come for Ambazonia. We go show on everything how the thing be start. We now understand no, no, how it don't happen. Hello. Hello. The problem is we are not getting sound from the other side. Yeah, Hello. I think we are not going to probably get calls. Yeah, yeah. it's just be unfortunate. We 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 are, we get the calls they come through, but we need to get the person where they talk on the other side. We never know whether the person they hear us or, or not. But we just want for for appeal for those of who now get good hearts for for donate to the ACBC. If you call, we ask you which way we need, and we go tell you now because um, we actually manage the small equipment where one of our brothers. He donates, he don't donate, no, say gam, he don't, he don't borrow the, the channel with the user for the time being. So, with time, we need for the buy our own. And when we want to buy our own now, we need for the buy the, 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 the latest and top of the range so that we'll, get, we'll give our people a better program, give them more effective programming so that we will enjoy them all we and we'll like for, for watch ACBC because that's the essence. We want to say we're going to forget about any other channel when we watch them at home. And abroad, the only watch that this one, it will give with time. We will need to give a uh, very effective programming way. Uh, we don't like for Shirong be glued to on our screens. And in fact, there are big surprises coming up uh, uh, for SBC. Uh, SBC, our government has put in place a board to run SBC, made up of, of members appointed from, voted from various countries and communities around the world. We have got a great team in place. And there's a lot of deliberations going on behind the scenes, and we want to revamp SCBC, renew content and all that. I know from January, a lot of changes are going to happen in SCBC, and we are going to start competing with other big media houses. I'm certain about that when I look at the plans that the, the board has got for SCBC. But then you, our viewers, you need to commit more to what is your own. This is our channel. It's the voice of Ambazonia. We must build it together, you know. At times when you are building, when you, when you build your, your house and you haven't yet roof, finished the roofing and you want to move away from the house that you are paying rent, you move in and there's rain falling on the other side, but you sleep and you are proud that it's your house, it's your own house, you know, but you are covered, you have just one room that is covered and then very soon you finally roof the other side, very soon you cement the whole house and Five years down the line, the house is very beautiful. Somebody comes and says, you've got a beautiful house. Nobody remembers that day that you moved in with your family and there was one room that wasn't covered or there were two rooms that were not cemented and all that. And that's where we started, you know, from humble beginnings. We are building something truly great. Like if you look at the business plan for SCBC, that's truly amazing. And I cannot even, I cannot even contemplate that we are going to, con we are going to be able to, to, to compete and beat uh, radio stations in neighboring La Republic, TV stations in neighboring La Republic very soon. So uh, come January, just hold tight to your seat. There's big surprises coming up. All the things that you have been asking SBC to do, SBC is going to do them and even more than what you've been asking them to do. Yeah. We are, we give a tell when I say La Republic, CRTV, the copy for me every day. Before we want to come on board, they never even get online TV. They start copy, put their own online, they even walk. They, then they, they see how we, we they make flyers, they send the, the, the advertised program. Like the public also advertise their own program and through flyers. 
they send her online, me people then uh, no say the program they can't on. They know they send program guide as we the send them. So they see how we start sending our own program guide, they start sending their own. So you see, we all set the trend that they work a full of our back. Before long, they no go feel midway at all. So I beg when we when we equipment need to function properly, they're gonna bear with us because um, we the use now mostly all equipment where our brother around donate for we and when we don't get good equipment we will know. You go see them, the, the thing that will change. And, and yes, we go continue for, for give good programming. Yeah, I think this is one important message that we must pass to our brothers and sisters that are trying to run away from their communities when they are attacked. La Republic is disguising, the military guys are disguising themselves for forest, forest guards. guards. And, and people see them as local friendlies and they go to them and they get arrested. Some of them get beaten up and all that. So if you are running away from your community because it's been attacked, be very careful with those you meet, especially in the bush, those dressed in all those green. Don't just take them for forest guards. You should be very careful with them. So it's an important, important message that we are passing, and people at home should circulate those type of messages with SMSs at home, which would go further than uh, to the people who haven't been able to watch, you know, and don't have Android phones to, to, to watch it online as well. So make sure that you push that message out there, uh, circulate a message, and the Republic is disguising for forest guards and arresting our people in the bushes, torturing our people in the bushes, so that people should be smart when they when they see um, when they see them in, in the bush, they should run. You should not go to anybody you don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we all the growth in our communities, we know uh, people of our community. If you don't see any strange faces, strange people ready to come around in uniforms, whether in our forest guard uniforms or in our witch kind uniform, we're uh, going to be very, very careful. Good. Yeah. Uh, Ellen is asking a very good question. Is SCBC uh, a private enterprise or an Ambazonian enterprise? SCBC is an Ambazonian enterprise. Every Ambazonian has got a share in SCBC. It's our TV. It's going to remain our TV it's forever. State TV. It's going to, uh, nobody is going to own SCBC. SCBC is going to be owned by all of us, and it's going to represent us. It's going to be our voice. It's going to take our message to the world, to ourselves. And that is what has going to remain. If you look at the composition of the board of SCBC, all the various communities that came together and started supporting the struggle from December last year, they have voted their leaders, coordinators in various countries around the world. Those same communities, the government recommended that those communities amongst themselves decide on one person each and send to the board of SCBC who would come and become a board member and represent that community in SCBC. So there's that community representation in the group of people that have been selected to run SCBC for Amazonians. It's, it's, it's going to remain that way. I don't think that anybody wants to change that anytime soon. That's our channel. We are going to look for creative ways to fund it. The board has worked out a very nice business plan and we Amazonians are going to invest in that business plan as Amazonians so that we grow our own and we make sure that we show our, our neighboring country that we can. Yes, we can do it. So we be looking out for the plans that the board is going to come out with from, December, from, from January and, and ensure that you participate in supporting that plan so that we build a broadcaster that can stand you know, amongst its peers. You know, yeah. so can reference it. All right. We, we all actually come to the end of the show. And if you get anything for ask us, if you go on our Facebook page, send us an uh, a mail. Uh, just go to the inbox play, uh, page and send us a mail. Um, if you want to request any information from, from the ACBC as you do online right now, if you just go there, there and send us an email or send us a mail to an inbox of the, the, the web page uh, of ACBC and we'll receive them and we'll give you a feedback on which way you want. So yes, um, we thank Kuna all for for being online, we thank all my we don't watch from home. Unfortunately, we will not get calls today, but we will work on the lines, and next time we will get a lot more calls. And we hope to see you again on Wednesday for yeah. another show. Thank you so much for for joining us this evening. This uh, brilliant show that is coming up uh, right after us, and we want you to stay tuned and watch us. Choose a gospel song. It's really going to uplift your spirit. Uh, our sister is doing a great job with, with her show. Uh, I, watch, I watch her show every, you know, every time it comes up, and it's a brilliant show. We, we are inviting you to join, choose a gospel song right after this, and, and just have fun and praise God, you know, and, and pray 
and, and just sing praises and rejoice because Ambazonia would really be free. Uh, for those who are watching online, just want to remind you, SBC app is there. You can have your catch-up in your pocket. You can watch programs after they have been broadcasted. You go on there and you select Amber Perspective on your catch-up store, and you can watch any episode of Amber Perspective that you have chosen. You can select the updates from the interim government spokespersons. You can select any program of SBC on the catch-up on the app, and you never have to miss a thing. So uh, we at SBC, we are struggling to keep the information in your pocket, readily available for you to be able to access so that we continue, continue to push our struggle together. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, enjoy the next show coming up. And good evening. I am a Southern Cameroonian. I am a freedom fighter. I have been enslaved for 55 years. I will fight and die for the liberation of my people. I will shed the last ounce of blood of my veins to accomplish this. Even if I die, let my bones speak from the grave. For, for I am a proud, born, born Southern Cameroon.
same Cameroon. Now for boy, I with me, I go lewa. Southern Cameroon. Now for Kumba, with me, I go stay. Yeah. 